All right, hello there. Today I want to talk about some advice that people keep throwing around as if it's sage, and that is build a game, not an engine. I see some kind of variation of that quote come up quite a lot, but if you actually read the post where this is from, I think they're missing the point. Now the point that usually comes up is don't build an engine, build a game. And they say, you know, use Unity, use Unreal, use Godot, or something like that. Don't bother building your own engine. But the essay that they're quoting actually doesn't say that. It says that what you should do is write a game and not write an arbitrary engine for a game that you don't know ex will exist or something like that. Every single game has an engine, regardless of whether it's advertised. The engine is just the code that makes the game part work. It's the glue under the hood. It's the thing that drives it. So you'll have a bunch of events that need to happen and things that need to be drawn and state that needs to be managed and sound that needs to play. And that's what the engine's job is. It's to make sure all of those things happen in the correct order. So a bespoke engine doesn't need anything that a game doesn't need, like the game doesn't need, the game that it's made for, right? So if you think back to like the Quake engine, uh, which has spawned many games from it, including things like Dota 2, which is not an FPS game, that was just made for shooting. Look, with the Quake engine, it's good at being a first-person shooter engine. Now, eventually, it was worked on over the years and became the Source engine. And before that, it was the Gold Source engine, which Half-Life was made with, right? And then Source and Half-Life 2. And basically, what I'm trying to say here is that the engines are made for a specific game. It's only recently that we've got these engines like Unity, which is made for a general purpose, Unity and Godot, specifically. Unreal Engine kind of evolved into that, and it's still not good at a lot of game types, because it was made for first-person shooter games. The Unreal Engine, Unreal Tournament, that's what it was made for. So it's really good if you want to make a first-person shooter. But uh, for other things, it's getting better. Uh, Unity is decent at a lot of things, but it's not made for anything specific. Now, you don't have to make anything that your game doesn't need if you build your own game engine. If you don't have 3D, you don't need to build a 3D renderer. You don't care about any of that. You don't need to be able to load models in. All you need to be able to do is draw rectangles with sprites on them. If the game doesn't use an entity component system, you don't need to write one. If the game you're making only needs to support one data type, then you can just write a loader for that data type. You don't need to load in PNGs and JPGs and TGAs and whatever other image types there are, DXTs or DTX, whatever it is, the NVIDIA ones. If you only need to support one type, and you should only support one type if you're making your own engine because why would you do more work than you have to? Now, the good thing about this is making a specific game gives you tangible goals. Then you know you need feature X because your game has Y, then you can just build that. Like if you're building Hollow Knight from scratch. You know you need pretty simple 2D physics, collision detection, triggers, you need to be able to draw sprites and animations, there's some lighting, 2D lighting effects in there, you need to be able to load the wall as you run around, whether that's loading areas or rooms, I think Hollow Knight does it with areas, that loads a whole area at once, you know, this kind of stuff. And that's all you need. You don't need to build more than that. That's the thing. So when people say they want to build their own game engine, I think the point is they should have a specific game in mind they're building the engine for. If they want to build their own game engine to compete with Unity, then, I mean, good luck. That's going to be pretty damn hard. But, you know, some people are crazy and they will do that. And more power to them. But for most of us who want to actually make games, but they also want to be good programmers, or maybe that's a bit of a pretentious way of saying it, Maybe they want to practice programming a bit more and they don't feel like learning one tool and getting stuck in that one environment is good for them long term. Then, you know, we're going to be making our own engines from scratch, but we're going to have games in mind. For example, I haven't announced this, so this is kind of a soft announcement, but my current indie game project is written from scratch. I'm making my own engine, but I'm only building the things that I need. So I built my own TGA loader and I only use TGA files now. I've basically got all of the game's data stored in TOML files, T-O-M-L. It's like uh, JSON. It's a serializable data format. So it's all stored in TOML files, all of the data, and I just read the TOML files in the game launch and then it transforms that into something 
that works for this particular game. And that transformation process will be different depending on the game. So that part of the code you'd have to rewrite. But in the future, I can use the same idea. And a lot of the things I will be able to reuse, um, I built like the image loader, like playing sounds, rendering sprites, how that all works, batch rendering process. Uh, the UI library is written from scratch. It's an immediate mode UI like I am GUI. And you don't have to write these things from scratch. I did because I wanted to reduce my dependencies as I was having build issues all the time. And because I'm working with an unstable language, Zig, you don't have to build everything from scratch, right? You can use the image loader load PNG, or you can use STB image. Uh, if you're using C or C++, those are great. Or even if you're using Zig, uh, you can use those as well. You can use mini audio if you want to, you know, play audio. In fact, I'm using a Tommel uh, reader or parser called Zig Tommel, I think. So I'm still using libraries. And you can put these libraries together and you can do useful things. And at the end of the day, you're going to have something that will hopefully be a playable game. So going forward after this game, assuming I want to make something else that's 2D, which I probably will, I can use most of this stuff again. And I can use a lot of the ideas again. That's another thing. I don't think it's a, it's a waste of time to build your own engine. If you're building an engine with no goal in mind, you may be wasting your time because you don't know what people are going to use your project for. And most likely no one is going to use it. That's just the sad truth. Unless you make something first class, which maybe you will and good luck people just won't use it because there's no use case for it. They may as well just use Unity or Raylib or something like that. Different engine or a different set of tools. But if you're solving a specific use case, then by all means, go for it. Like maybe you're making an engine specifically for point and click adventure games and that's all it does, but it's really good at it. You know, then I could see people using that for sure. Or, you know, some, something like that, right? But if you're making an engine that's like, yeah, I can kind of do 3D and kind of do 2D and, you know, it feels a little bit janky with the, with the physics, but, you know, it kind of works. That's what Unity was like, I don't know, about 2015 or something like that. It didn't feel good. It didn't feel good back then, but now it's much better. So my point is, don't miss the point. The point of that article that people keep quoting is not to not build an engine. All right, it's to focus on building something specific. Otherwise, you're just meandering like I am right now. So I'm going to cut this video and I'll catch you in the next one.